wheelchair comfort, wheelchair performance, help determine your ease in getting about, the ease in accessing the life around you. Wheelchair features, proper chair setup, routine chair maintenance, a simple matter of choice of what works best for you in your unique setting, situation, and lifestyle. Early exploration at the onset of wheelchair use is essential. As early choices are quick to become habits, habits that are often difficult to break. What follows in this program is a general summary of these choices. The many options that will affect your comfort and the way your chair handles and performs. Chair weight and frame style are important considerations when selecting a wheelchair. Affecting both maneuverability and convenience. Many new chairs are made with lightweight alloys designed for function and efficiency, comfort and performance. Chairs that are easier to push, easier to maneuver. Chairs designed with style. How easily a chair responds is in part due to whether it has a rigid or folding frame. A rigid frame is one solid piece and does not flex and give with use. Therefore, the work energy used to maneuver a rigid frame goes into direct chair response. If you plan to be active in sports, you might consider this frame style. A folding chair made in multiple frame sections is heavier and requires more work to maneuver. The chair, because it flexes at folding points, absorbs work energy. But if you drive or travel, you may want the convenience a folding chair offers. When considering frame style, also consider your options in foot plates. Foot plates are either fixed or swing away removable. The advantage of the swing away style is convenience. The disadvantage when compared to the fixed style is the increased length, increased turning radius, and their lack of durability. A choice between supporting heel loops and leg straps will also affect overall length by determining how far your feet extend over the foot plates and out from the chair. When selecting tires, think first of your intended use. Will your primary use be out in the community or indoors? When motion is difficult for the new or more severely disabled user, a smooth, solid polyurethane tire allows maximum ease in movement on indoor surfaces. Outside, this tire has the disadvantage of providing no shock absorption and little traction. An air-filled pneumatic tire gives a smoother ride over varied and irregular surfaces, providing an important cushion against hard edges and sudden drops. On the pneumatic tire, tread depth and tire pressure determine the amount of tire grip and traction, important in outdoor use. Greater tread depth and lower tire pressure provide more traction. The disadvantage is more work pushing and maneuvering. With all choices, there are trade-offs. Increased tread depth also minimizes the risk of flats, but brings with it the disadvantage of picking up dirt. dirt that is easily transferable to hands, clothes, carpets, and floors. A quartz sew-up tire collects less dirt and provides efficiency on indoor surfaces, but lacks the durability and traction needed outdoors. A compromise is a pneumatic tire with the minimum amount of tread to provide traction and durability, reinforced with Kevlar strips and puncture-resistant tubes, which will help reduce the risk of flats. 
Wheel sizes vary. Your selection will be in large part determined by your physical size. Tire size can affect your stroke. A larger size tire can give greater access to the wheel when pushing. At the same time, when combined with a lower seat, this additional height increases the elevation necessary for clearance during transfers. So, choice offers another trade-off. In wheel selection, quick-release axles are an option of great convenience. When replacing a wheel, care should be taken to properly lock the quick-release mechanism into place or the wheel could come off. This is a real concern, but a rare occurrence. With proper care and by using axles with recessed release buttons, the convenience will far outweigh any risk. Finally, consider the type of wheel, solid mag or the traditional spoke. Spoke wheels are lighter, but can dent and lose their true or roundness. The mag wheel is heavier, but never loses its shape, never needs adjustment. The type of push rim you choose will depend on the extent of your grip and muscle sparing. Standard metal push rims, friction or non-slip rims, or projection rims. Projection rims come with 8, 12, or 16 projections. With limited stroke control and reach, a greater number of projections increases the chances that a projection will be in the proper stroke position when needed. Projection angle is either oblique or vertical. For the new user, the oblique angle provides greater surface area on which to push. The disadvantages are increasing the chair's width, catching projections on clothing and other objects, and inhibiting hand access to the underside of the rims when slowing or stopping. The angle you choose is a trade-off, an easier time when pushing, or more maneuverability and convenience. Most new users start with the oblique angle and with gained experience and strength soon change to the vertical. To change the angle, new push rims generally have to be ordered. To suit differences in hand size and grip style, the spacing between the push rim and tire is adjustable. Adjust by changing the length of screws and spacers. Front casters in various sizes are either pneumatic, that is air-filled, semi-pneumatic, or hard and solid. Solid casters offer better front-end maneuverability on smooth surfaces. Outdoors, on rough surfaces, hard casters are less forgiving and catch jarring the chair user. An experienced user with good wheelie skills can avoid this problem. The pneumatic caster smooths out the ride and is better outdoors, especially when wheelie skills are not developed. The trade-off is again the reverse, a loss of maneuverability and increased drag. Caster locks, as an option, keep the chair from pivoting during transfers. Their disadvantage is the tendency to engage unexpectedly. A high chair back gives trunk support which is important to quadriplegics and provides the option of comfort to other users. Again, there are disadvantages. A sense of being pushed forward creating a slight sense of imbalance, an interference with your push stroke, a greater difficulty reaching push handles for support, and being more cumbersome to stow. A low chair back gives a greater freedom of movement and may be preferable to the paraplegic, especially if active and involved in sports. Removable armrests are also an option, assisting in transfers, providing additional support, and with side guards, helping to protect clothing. The disadvantage is the further restriction of movement during a push stroke. The type of armrest you choose is an important consideration, especially when chair width is a concern. By choosing wraparound armrests, you decrease the chair's width. Armrests are fixed or adjustable in height, 
with either desk or full-length arms. This allows greater flexibility for comfort and increased access to desks and tables. The selection of the proper chair cushion is extremely important for both your health and comfort. The information required to make the right choice is extensive, so work closely with your healthcare professional when making your selection. Wheel locks prevent your chair from rolling and can assist in slowing and stopping. Your options are limited to high and low mount. High mount wheel locks with or without extensions are easily accessible but often get in the way of your stroke, especially when a forward lean is required. With low mount wheel locks, the trade-off is reversed. You lose accessibility, but gain a greater freedom when pushing. The heel holder, when pushing up an incline, keeps the chair from rolling backward between strokes. This feature is an advantage when strength and skill levels are at issue, but has the disadvantage of engaging on its own, and of generally just getting in the way. With experience, many users will discard it. Anti-tip bars are an adjustable option that will keep your chair from tipping over backward. They are often used by higher quadriplegics and new users developing their skills. Their disadvantage is that they can be dangerous when going off a curb, catching and possibly pitching you out of your chair. Proper chair fitting is in part selecting a chair that suits the demands of your size and disability. It is taking advantage of a chair's adjustable features to better meet your specific needs, needs that may change over time. Having your chair set for proper balance, a balance that meets your skill requirements, is key to safety and performance. Flexibility and axle placement allows you to set this balance point. Most chairs have a slot or a number of points at which the axle can be positioned. The further you advance the axle forward, the less weight is centered on the casters and the easier the chair is to tip, turn, and propel. This is a distinct advantage for the experienced, active user. By adjusting the axle back, the chair's center of gravity is shifted to the front, placing more weight on the casters and increasing stability. For the new user testing newfound skills, the more stable ride may be preferable. Seat height is determined by your leg length and leg position, a minimum ground to foot plate clearance of three inches, and choice of seat cushion. Proper setup should help prevent pressure sores on bony prominences. When foot plates are adjusted, it should create a horizontal or downward sloping thigh, shifting weight off the bony surfaces. Seat height affects how you access your immediate environment. A high seat will give you an easier reach to objects above you, but a harder reach to those objects below. A low seat allows you to fit easily under a table, but exposes more wheel, again making transfers difficult. And that extra wheel height, which is a disadvantage in transfers, is an advantage when pushing, because it increases tire access. Your needs decide what is important. Seat angle is based on trunk stability and balance needs. A seat angled back creates a slight pocket which gives you additional trunk support and exposes more tire for pushing. When the seat is angled back, weight is taken off the front casters, again making the chair easier to tip, easier to maneuver. If you're a new or cautious user, you can compensate and regain chair stability by adjusting the axle further back. This re-establishes the weight on the casters while maintaining support with the new adjusted angle. Anytime the seat angle is changed, the caster housing needs to be adjusted to remain perpendicular to the ground. This angle maintains the least amount of resistance for ease in turning. Wheel camber, the angle the wheels sit in relation to the chair frame, 
also affects chair stability and performance. As you increase the angle, you widen the chair's wheelbase. This increases stability and makes turning easier. The disadvantage is that an increased wheelbase, or width, creates problems of access in narrow areas. Keeping your chair clean and maintained is keeping your chair performing at its best. Start by developing a routine maintenance schedule. You may choose to do the work yourself or rely on your local wheelchair vendor. Clean your chair on a regular basis. Dirt and salt in some communities corrodes paint and metal, damages wheel bearings, and ruins clothes. Clean with mild soapy water and wax new paint to protect the finish. Use a light oil, WD-40 or a silicone spray on all movable and removable parts. Don't oil bearings. Pay special attention to the quick release mechanism. Lack of care might result in the axle becoming stuck to the axle plate. For safety, especially with folding chairs, periodically do general nut and bolt tightening as nuts can work loose over time. Check tire pressure and wear for safety and to avoid the risk of flats. Keep an eye open for items embedded in the tire and replace tires that are excessively worn. Tire pressure should be maintained at the level designated on the side of the tire, generally between 50 and 70 pounds, though some tires can accept well over 100 pounds. Low tire pressure can cause damage to rims, require more energy to push, and decrease effectiveness of wheel locks and hill holders. With spoked rims, wheels can lose their true or roundness and develop a wobble. This has a strong negative effect on how a chair handles and needs to be checked and corrected. Look for loose or broken spokes as these maintain the wheel's roundness. Spokes can be tightened or replaced using a spoke wrench. Truing a tire, that is restoring the roundness, is best accomplished by your wheelchair vendor or local bike shop. It can be a tedious process. Over time, bearings wear out from general use. This may happen quickly due to lack of care, so it's important to keep your chair clean. Worn bearings can reduce pushing efficiency and must be replaced when worn or damaged. Bearings should be checked once or twice a year or as needed. Remember to check caster and caster housings as well as wheel bearings. To check, spin the wheels and casters. They should spin freely and smoothly. To be more precise when checking the wheel bearings, remove the axle and roll the bearings with your finger. If movement feels rough, have the bearings replaced. Truing tires, replacing bearings, setting camber, adjusting wheel locks and hill holders, or just fixing a flat. All basic to wheelchair maintenance, but beyond the ability of many chair users, but not all. Many are capable and some choose either out of necessity or desire to do the work themselves. In either case, your local wheelchair vendor can assist in repairs or provide tips on the proper tools and procedures necessary for the job. For problems with wheels and tires, a bike shop can also provide assistance. Whether relying on others or doing the work yourself, you should have some basic maintenance supplies on hand. Cleaning supplies. A bucket, mild soap, rags, some car wax, and an old toothbrush. Light oil, WD-40 or silicon spray. An assortment of wrenches, a crescent, an open end, a ratchet. Pliers and or vice grips. Screwdrivers, both standard and Phillips head. A spoke wrench and valve tightener. A spare tube, a patch kit, and maybe a spare pocket-sized tire pressure gauge. Tire irons to help in changing the tire without damaging the tube. 
And finally, a hand pump with an attached pressure gauge. Wheelchair comfort. Wheelchair performance is a matter of knowing your needs, knowing your options, knowing the advantages and disadvantages inherent in many of the choices you face. Choices in wheelchair features, setup, and maintenance. The information in this program, combined with the advice of your healthcare professional, wheelchair vendor, and other users, will help you make the informed choices needed to get the maximum benefit out of your chair, increasing its value to you as you move back into the process of living.